With deep learning, there's quite a few challenges still. Um, the thing that we're really looking at is how do we expand its ability to classify on data sets? So for example, a lot of images that have been trained on uh, historically over the last several years are very small. They might be 50 by 50 pixels. But we have data sets now where the images could very well be 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. That's a lot of data that has to go into this computer system, into the memory, and how do we expand on that uh, so that deep learning can, can scale to that level of data. We also have a different scaling of data where uh, you know, instead of having just a, a few hundred or a few thousand images to go through, we very easily could have millions or tens of millions of images to go through. Uh, and so how do we basically do that um, at a scale that doesn't take a really long time? Another challenge that we have is how do you take a supercomputer and you scale deep learning algorithms to leverage an entire supercomputer? So deep learning uh, basically requires a lot of passes through the data. So from a, just a system engineering view with computers, um, we have a lot of data that has to come off of the disk into the system across thousands of nodes to be trained on then back to disk and in a repeat, uh, repetitive manner and how do we do that without bogging down the system performance. Um, there's other challenges that are related to uh, time and space. So for example, if you want to do spatial um, uh, classification or prediction, you take one approach to analyzing the data, but if you want to do a temporal prediction or classification, you have to take a different approach. And so things that are tuned to time or tuned to space don't necessarily mix. And so when we come to scientific data sets, we have the combination of both, right? We have, for example, when climate, we'll have a picture of, of a satellite image, but then we have a sequence of those images that cover time. And so how do we address both time and space and do that in a way that we don't have to mix a bunch of different algorithms? Can deep learning basically be scaled to address both of those.